Hey, it's Jeff. Today I thought I would share this interesting object that just came off my 3D printer. It's not a mechanical object. It's not some kind of jig. It's not a crazy gear. It is a purely aesthetic object that I designed to have these interesting properties. From this side, it's a J. And from this side, it's an R. And from this side, it's a G. My initials, JRG. I thought this might be just a fun trinket to have on the coffee table. It was inspired by this famous book cover from the book Gödel Escher Bach. You can see they have these two wooden objects that make the GEB initials uh, up and down both sides of this enclosure. I don't know if they actually built this or if this is a render or what, but I thought it might be interesting to make my own. So let's take a look at how I built this in Fusion 360. So here we are in a new file in Fusion 360. And the first thing I'm going to do is save this. We'll call this uh, cutaway experiment. The next thing I'm going to do is create a new component. It's always wise to be working inside of a component in Fusion 360, even if you think it's going to be a one component project, working inside a component now will save you from wanting to be inside a component later. Next, I'm going to define the length of one side of my project, and for my case it's going to be 50 millimeters. We'll see why that's going to become a parameter in just a second. And with my component selected, I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom plane here, which is just going to be a rectangle with each side of length, side length, which we just defined to be 50 millimeters. This side will also be side length. We can stop sketch. And now we will extrude this for a distance of side length for another 50 millimeters. So this will be our building block, our clay from which we will carve our shape. Now, one thing I'm going to do before I get into carving is going to seem a, a bit overkill at the moment. What I'm going to do is create mid planes between two of the three sets of faces. I don't need to do all three. You'll see why in just a moment. I've got two mid planes selected there, sort of bisecting the cube in these two directions. And I'm going to create a sketch on one of them. And on that plane, which sits right in the center of our cube, I'm going to draw lines from the midpoint of one side of the cube stretching out through the opposite side. So you see I've got these two lines. And actually, I'm going to go back in and make this a construction line as well. And then I'm going to create a Oops. Then I'm going to create a sketch on this plane that similarly will have a construction line there. Right, stop sketch. You'll see what I've done is I've created lines that come straight out of the centers of these three sides of the cube, and that's going to become useful later. So. What I'm now going to do is create a sketch on one of those three sides of my cube. I'm going to start arbitrarily with this top face here. And before I get to actually creating my first letter sketch in this face here, I'm actually going to stop sketch and come and create some placeholder sketches on these other two sides for my other two letters. So I'll do a blank sketch on that side. I'll do a blank sketch on this back side, just so I'm not trying to create sketches in arbitrary places uh, after I've carved some of this material away in a second. So now let's go back into that first sketch we created. And on this top face, I'm going to draw my first letter of my initial. Uh, I've done JRG, you've seen how that comes out, but let's choose a different letter. Um, let's say my initials are uh, M, E, H. We'll do M and E and H. So I'm going to create the sketch for M here. And one thing I'm going to do, rather than drawing it in relation to this top face of this cube proper, I'm going to do something a little bit strange. So I'm going to start in a rectangle, coincide it with that corner, coincide it with that corner. And then, having drawn it, I'm going to go in, I'm going to delete those coincident relationships. There we go, and delete them. So now, this is a rectangle which happens to be the same size as our cube but isn't actually attached to the face of this cube in any way. Uh, and on that, I can now proceed to draw my first letter, which I said was going to be M. And I'll speed through the details of making this sketch. For this M, it's essentially uh, three lines uh, with some parallel constraints to keep them nicely lined up, and then mirrored across the center line of the shape, since I want this letter to, of course, be symmetrical. And now that that's complete, I can stop sketch. I'm going to turn my body back on. 
and I'm going to do an extrude of the pieces of this sketch that are not my letter. I'm going to do them as an extrude of a single side to an object. That object is going to be simply the other side of my cube. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we have completed one of our letters. So that's our letter M. It's not a very good letter M for now, but we can always change it later. So now, using those sketches, those blank sketches that we made earlier, I'm going to do our other two letters. So let's do the E on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is to create a rectangle that is the same side as this cube, but then delete its coincident relationships so that it's floating in space. And I, I'm sorry for all the skullduggery, but you'll see why we're doing this in just a little bit. So now I'll make my E inside of this square without relationship to the body behind it. And once again, I'm going to skip over the details of making the sketch of this E just three lines in perpendicular and parallel, and then I mirrored them across the center line of the cube. So now that that's complete, once again, I will stop sketch. I will turn my body back on so I can see what I'm doing. I will do an extrude from this sketch of this face and this face, the pieces that are not my E. I'm going to do them against one side and to an object, and then the object is going to be the back side. I can use a cut all the way through there. I'll say cut. It's automatically default as a cut, which is great. And I will hit OK. So now we have two letters complete. You can see from this side it's an E, and this side it's an M. So only one more letter to go. And that final letter, of course, will be our H in M-E-H. So I'm going to use the last of our original sketches here, which I actually made on the back side of the cube. And I'm going to draw my H one more time, creating a rectangle the same size as the cube, and then deleting those coincident relationships. And then I'll make my H. And let's say for some aesthetic reasons, I've decided that I want to have my H rotated 90 degrees in that direction. So I'll just flip this over before I start sketching. And now I'll draw my H proper. And one more time, I'm going to breeze through the details of creating this sketch. It was super easy, just two lines, uh, mirrored those across the vertical center line, and then mirrored them across the horizontal center line, so that the four quadrants of the H all look the same. And there's my H. So one last time, I will stop sketch. I'll turn my body back on. I'll actually turn that sketch back on. Make sure I can see what I'm doing. And this time, because there is not much of a, uh, a back surface here to cut toward with those holes in my H, what I'm actually going to do is create an offset plane. I'll use the offset plane tool and uh, create a plane that is offset zero millimeters from this back face, essentially cutting directly through this back place. And I will turn construction back on. And one thing to remember is though construction planes usually show up as this sort of limited space, this sort of limited rectangle, they do in fact extend infinitely in all directions. It is a, it's a true plane, not a face. So now that I've created that, I'm going to do one more time. I'm going to extrude these chunks here of that sketch I created, which are not part of my H. I'll do this extrude to object, use this plane that I just created, and you can see even though this uh, this shape doesn't have material all over this back face, because I was able to just extrude all the way to this plane, it's going to do the cut that I want it to do. So I will hit OK, and uh, ooh, that's a problem. I've created three separate bodies. This is not going to 3D print very well. So this finally will be the reason why we created the construction lines passing through the center of each face of the cube back at the beginning, and why we've been careful to preserve the sketches as not being projections of the side of the cube, not connected to the sides of that original cube at all, is it's going to allow us to rotate our sketches as they are. So let's take our H sketch, that last sketch we made. I'll double click to go back into edit. It. I'm going to turn my bodies off, and I should be able to select everything right click, move and copy. I'll do a rotate type move. For my axis, I'll use this handy dandy line passing through the center of my sketch there. I'll do a rotation of 90 degrees and we'll see our whole sketch has rotated by 90 degrees. So I'll hit OK. I'll stop sketch. I'll turn my bodies back on. And there we go. And now you can see from the top our shape is an M. From this side our shape is an E, and from this side, our shape is an H. So that's just a really useful way to set up this kind of project to preserve your ability to rotate your sketches later when you're carving through a bunch of space like that. So just to drive home why it's so important to isolate your sketches from your body in this particular example, I've gone back in 
to my E sketch here, and I've made it so that this line down the center, that is the, the mirror line that's relating the top half of my shape to the bottom, is uh, a projection of this uh, line coming through the center of the cube. And that would be an easy thing to do when you're making this sketch. But the problem that it causes, watch what happens, I'll select everything, do a move and copy, I'll do a rotate. I still have this nice axis poking out to use, but uh, now when I do a 90 degree rotation, my E is not great. And I'll show you what happens as I grab my rotation slider and rotate it around here. My mirror line for those lines defining my shape uh, is not changing because it's still a projection of another line in my space. So I, when I'm making this, I really want to be sure that everything I might have to rotate later is contained within the sketch. So with the shape complete, I sent it to print on my Maker Select V2.1 for Monoprice, which also known as the Wanhao Duplicator i3 version 2.1, same exact machine, with some pretty generic Isan PLA Plus. And this took maybe an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes to print overall. And what we're left with is this shape. And you can see exactly as expected, from this side it's an M, from this side it's an E, and from the final side it's an H. So anyway, hopefully you glean something interesting from this project. Maybe you go out and try it with letters of your own. Have a good one.